Do you know that feeling where you're super in your head to the extent that you're not even really present with what's happening because you're so caught up in your own head trash? Welcome to Worldly Families. I'm Justine. Traveling to over 40 countries and living abroad has opened my eyes to new ways of being and doing. I'm all about helping you expand your horizons so you can live and parent more intentionally and more joyfully. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to a framework that I learned in my improv training that's really helped me in life. This is the concept of the three circles of presence. It's basically how you show up. First circle. First circle is this idea of sort of being concave, shrinking down, taking up less space because you're feeling unsure of yourself or insecure or you're stressed out and you just want to kind of go inside your little hermit crab shell. <laughs> so this looks like shoulders forward, hunched down, less eye contact, looking at the ground a lot more, and just generally being sort of quiet, not, not as willing to jump in and make offers or respond in any kind of extroverted way to whatever else is going on in the scene. Third circle. When your third circle your energy is big, your chest is puffed out, you're uber confident, but maybe you're not really, but it feels like you're being uber confident. Maybe there's a little insecurity underneath that, but it's a look at me kind of energy. It's a hog the stage kind of energy. And it's a take control of the scene kind of energy. And that happens in people's regular lives too. Second circle. Second circle is the ideal presence. And that's where you're confident and assertive, but not aggressively or obnoxiously so. And you are really present with everything, all of your senses. So you're listening to the other players. Um, it's almost as if you have antenna all over your body and they're sensing and perceiving everything. Most people, when they're feeling stressed or insecure, will either push out and be extra third circle, literally they're just extra, or they'll sort of collapse in and go first circle. It tends to be that introverts will default to first circle and extroverts will default to third circle. So knowing that about yourself is really helpful. Examples. When I learned about this, I looked back on an experience I had had in my MBA program. Essentially, by the last term of the program, I was so stressed out and overwhelmed from being the president and chief happiness officer of a startup and having a baby, becoming a toddler, and going to business school all at the same time that I started to go real third circle. I was organizing all kinds of social events. I was like, okay, tonight's karaoke, tomorrow's salsa night, then game, game night. And nobody had ever elected me social chair, <laughs> nor did I reach out and ask what people wanted or were interested in. I just started planning things and, and publicizing them. That's getting third circle. It gets to a point where you're like, am I being annoying? If you have that kind of self-awareness, right? You're like, I feel like I'm annoying myself right now. Where this is applied in my life with my kids is that Autumn, who's seven, just recently started a new school. She's only been there for now 13 days total. And the beginning has been a little rough socially because she came in hot, right? She came in very third circle and was already trying to lead the group before really listening and understanding the, the group dynamics that were already in play and how she might fit into them. So when I talked to Autumn about this, I explained the concept. I explained an example of when I had been stressed out and how I went third circle. And then we talked about how that's just an effect of being in transition and going through change. Sometimes change can make us want to kind of grab on for control. And so letting go of that, reeling it back in a little to second circle where it's more listening, observing, participating what's already going on as opposed to trying to shape it. The next day she went to school, she had a fantastic day. She went from saying, oh no, this is the worst day ever to this is the best day ever. And her teacher commented that she had overheard Autumn communicating in a really healthy way with some of her peers. Sometimes it's the awareness alone that helps you either reel it in if you're getting a little too big or to expand back into a more confident place if you're starting to shrink. Quick aside, if you're finding my content valuable, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Especially in times of transition for you and your kids, 
being aware that this is a dynamic that can happen will help you look out for it and help you speak to it, address it, journal about it, whatever it may be that would be helpful at the time. It can also be a helpful tool for communicating about your child to your teachers so they understand this is them stressed, not just this is them. And same for the kids. I talked with Autumn about this is how she's acting right now during this period of transition. That doesn't mean that that is who she is. I hope this concept of the three circles of presence is a helpful paradigm for you and your family. Make it a great day and I'll see you in the next video.